Hi team, I hope you're all well. Happy day one of final book support group. Um, I am excited for this week. I'm overwhelmed, I'm not gonna lie. There was no reading vlog for last week and I wanted to apologize and explain myself. <laughs> um, not that I ever need to do that because you know, if I don't upload a reading vlog, I don't upload a reading vlog. Um, but I did want to explain myself. Last week was a very, very tough week. I did start filming a reading vlog and by about Thursday, Friday, it all fell to pieces. Uh, the reason being, it was a really, really hard week. I started the week off coming down from a migraine on Sunday. So I had migraine hangover and a lingering headache on Monday, which was a really tough day. And then the week just went from bad to worse. We had some family stuff going on on Andy's side of things, which I don't want to explain here. It's not my family, so I don't want to explain it here. But we had some stuff going on with that for a few days, Monday through till Wednesday afternoon. And then Wednesday evening, Thomas um, took very, very ill and uh, ended up waking up screaming about nine o'clock in the evening. So I ended up going to the hospital with Tara about 11 o'clock and taking Thomas to the hospital he did have an appointment to get checked over we were concerned he might have scarlet fever because nursery had sent a letter home with him on tuesday to say that it was doing the rounds at nursery so what we didn't know was that there was a girl in class with him on wednesday that had it uh, she was also in there with him on Tuesday. So he came home from nursery. Everything seemed fine. He went to bed. He woke up nine o'clock screaming. So we took him to the hospital. Doctor checked him over and said, I think he's fine. It could just be something viral. So I want to get him to go to the doctors tomorrow and get like a throat swab. We left. Tara said as we left, I don't know <laughs> how we move forward from this because he hasn't explained to me how that's going to happen. So I was like, that is very strange. Just keep your eye on him tonight. We'll see what happens. So she goes home. I go back to Andy's and about two o'clock in the morning, um, he wakes up crying. Matt goes in to check on him. And as he walks into his room, Thomas projectile vomits everywhere, all over his bed, all over himself. So they get him sorted out. Matt takes him downstairs and sleeps downstairs on the couch with him. And he is throwing up every 45 minutes. So right through till about half past six in the morning. So half past eight in the morning, Tara gets a phone call from the doctor. We want Thomas to come in for this throat swab. She explains to him what's gone on throughout the night. And the doctor says, okay, bring him in. We want to check him over. Checks him over, says he's got strep A. So gives him a dose of antibiotics and they say to keep an eye on him. If he gets any worse, give us a ring. So mid afternoon, he starts to get really bad. This was on Thursday. I called around in the morning to see him. He looked so pale and so unwell. He wasn't eating. He was drinking water where he could, but he just kept bringing it back up. And uh, he just looked really unwell. He was in bed. Matt ended up working from his bedroom not Matt's bedroom, Thomas's bedroom, to keep an eye on him. Doctor said you need to keep Thomas and Luca separated for 24 hours with this strep A to make sure to, uh, Luca doesn't get it. So mid-afternoon, Tara phones the doctor again because, same doctor, because he ended up with a rash on his back and on his face. His face was very, very flush and the doctor said it sounds like it has become scarlet fever so luckily the antibiotics he's on were going to work well should have helped with it but the doctor did say that if he gets any worse you're going to have to take him into a and e um so that they can put him on a drip and get the antibiotics into his system a lot quicker than what you can at home with the antibiotics yourself so we were all panicking i had a good cry on thursday evening i was exhausted god only knows how tara and matt were feeling um i'm not his mother he is my nephew not my son uh but i am uh, very much an empath and anybody that i care for that is unwell or upset for any reason i want to take their pain away horrendously and it can exhaust me um so i wanted to take my like thomas's pain away i wanted to take my Tara's pain away and i was so exhausted i was really worried about him and i was feeling very very helpless that there was nothing i could do to help either matt and tara or thomas 
So they now had to keep the kids separated for 48 hours, um, which I think was quite stressful for Matt and Tara. Thursday wasn't too bad because he just spent the whole day in bed. Friday, however, he was perking up much more, which was great news. It meant he didn't need to go to the hospital. The doctor even actually phoned on Friday morning to check in on Thomas. He said, I don't normally do this. Please don't think this is strange of me to do, even though it is a little bit. But I was really worried about Thomas last night and I just wanted to check in and see how he was, which I thought was really nice. And I said to Tara, you would never normally get that. Usually doctors diagnose and then you never hear from them again, unless you go in to see them again for something else. Um, but it's really nice that he checked in on Thomas and I really liked that. So anyway, he perked up. Matt and Tara took him to the park on Saturday to get him some fresh air and get him out of the house for a little bit. And by the sounds of things, he's getting better. He's on antibiotics for 10 days. Um, and from the looks of things, he hasn't managed to pass it on to Luca, which is great news. Uh, we did have my cousin's 30th birthday meal yesterday with the whole family which was lovely and then me and Andy went to the pub to watch the Liverpool United game because he's a Liverpool fan very sad result for us us Liverpool fans I'm Bolton fan but obviously by association I'm now a Liverpool fan as well um and I ended up getting you know what I didn't even have a lot to drink I think I had maybe three pints and one bottle of cider three pints of cider and one bottle no two pints of cider and two bottles of cider so four ciders and I was pretty drunk and I said to Andy later on I said I can't understand why I'm so drunk I've eaten I've eaten more than I normally do when we go out drinking so I've eaten something I don't understand why I'm so drunk I think it's because I've been so exhausted like mentally drained and mentally exhausted this week that I'm just completely out of it and it's really hit me like a ton of bricks so last week last week was a mess I read zero i didn't pick a single book up last week i read nothing i may have made a little bit more progress in fake i don't know because i can't remember where i was at the end of the previous week to where i am now but otherwise not a damn thing so i scrapped the whole vlog it became incredibly messy i read nothing it was no longer a reading vlog i scrapped the whole thing i spent the whole week that i wasn't running around after people are working um basically finishing off watching business proposal which i really really enjoyed and i'm very excited to continue on with the manga and also if there's going to be a season two get on with that as well um and then also started love is blind so i watched the entirety of season one and i'm part way through season two that's all i did with my week last week uh so it's very very exhausting and it was a really low week for me and I'm hoping to pick that up this week so it's currently 20 past eight I have been home since about half past seven uh, I did drop Andy off at work this morning and nip to Asda on the way home just to pick up some bits food and like some flowers and stuff for a different video um and now i'm here to start this vlog so that's something that i can tick off my to-do list i have got a fuck ton of stuff to do today whether or not i actually get any reading done i don't know but if i could get all my work done today it does mean that i will have the whole of tomorrow and a good portion of wednesday to read before i go to andy's in the evening um so that i can go to work thursday and friday so hopefully i will be able to get all my work done today so that i can focus on reading for the next two days which would be fantastic news because my tbr is looking very very ridiculous to say the least um i don't think i'm going to get through all of these to be perfectly honest there is another book on here as well that i would like to get through that is massive that i need to get through for the really long video that i was really hoping at this point would be fucking finished and isn't uh, and I'm start starting to get very stressed about it because I still need to edit that video. So very quickly, because this has already been a really long introduction to this video. I do need to finish off Fake, which is the third book in the Madison Kate series. I don't have longer left at all with this, which is the other reason why it's so strange to me that I didn't read last week. I was clearly not in the correct headspace. I literally have about 40 minutes of the audio left of this. It would have been so easy for me to finish it last week and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So I ended up not reading this 
last week um so i've got about 40 minutes of this left to finish and that will get me done and dusted with that it's 450 pages so i'm hoping to finish that and then with any luck i can go on to kate because my intention last week was to read fake and kate's so like if i didn't pick anything else up as so long as i finished these two i'd have been happy last week didn't end up managing that so kate is the, the the fourth and final book in this series and hopefully i will be able to pick that up then we also have shadowlands which is the sixth and final book in the savage lands series by stacy marie brown um so it will be great to finish this one this fucking annoys the life out of me i say it every single time but the grimy fingerprints from amazon so annoying um so there is that one so that is two final books another one is hopeless by elsie silver which i would like to finish and will be a very very quick read if i even get like four hours this evening to be able to do some reading after i've smashed out my work today i will be able to finish hopeless which will be great news and then i've also got the world we make by nk jemison on here which was, was for the prompt choose a book which has been on your tbr for more than a year um so i would like to get to this one but honestly it's my lowest priority on this tbr this week and then i have just posted um a poll in the final book support group discord channel for spy x family volume 4 and also business proposal volume 2 uh for my graphic novel and also the poll pick prompt so um we'll see which one of those two comes back again i will probably actually try and read whatever wins for this one this evening so that i've actually made a start on reading today but yeah that is my tbr looking pretty ridiculous especially on the basis that there is one more book as well i would like to get to this week and it's not a small book it's about 600 pages but i'm not going to be able to tell you about it because it's for a different vlog so if i actually manage to get to it we'll see and he's also off this weekend as well he bought the weekend off after i'd already arranged that this was going to be final book support group week <laughs> I don't know if I'm actually going to see him this weekend. We'll have to see. He needs to go and do some holiday shopping. He's going to go with his mum. So I will probably just say to him, you just go out with your mum. Spend the weekend with your mum because they never get the weekend off together. They work at the same place but opposite shifts. So when he's in work, she's off. And when he's off work, she's in. So it would be nice for them to have a weekend together, I think. So I think I might just leave that um and just try and stay home and get some reading done this weekend we'll see whether or not that works out but yeah those are my plans so i'm gonna go get myself started with some work i've got patron sprints starting at half past nine so in just over an hour and then we have kickoff sprints for final book support group at 5 p.m this evening so I've, we've got a full day of sprints on top of all of the other shit i need to do today so we'll see whether or not i actually manage to get all my stuff done i think my aim is to try and film everything i need to film this morning and then i can spend the rest of the day editing because i've got stuff that's already filmed that needs editing for while i'm away this has been the longest introduction ever so i am going to get going before i bore you to tears anymore um but i wanted to explain myself for last week um i i know i apologized at the beginning i'm not going to do it again my patrons keep shouting at me for apologizing for stuff that's out of my hands like illnesses in family members and me mental health in myself um and my chronic illness I, that is out of my hands i shouldn't be apologizing for it but i do I do feel bad when I make promises like sprints or certain videos and then don't follow through with them. So I feel bad. I'm not going to apologise for it, but I feel bad that you didn't get a weekly vlog this week. So my apologies. Um, obviously, the weekly vlog should go up Wednesday and it's not going to now. I have diff different videos going up this week, which is fine. I'm, I'm working around it. It has caught me up a little bit because I've had to come up with another video idea for Sunday. But it is what it is. So anyway, I'm going to go and I will check back in with you when I've got some to update, update you on. <laughs> Good 
evening it is still monday it's currently 25 past 11 and i'm about to go to bed but i thought i'd better come on and give you an update because i have done some reading today yay um today's been a pretty heavy day i have done a lot of work but i actually managed to get i wanted to like concentrate on filming and editing today i actually managed to get three videos filmed five videos edited because i already had two videos filmed that i needed to get that i previously filmed um five videos edited and all the thumbnails done they're all uploaded scheduled and ready to go i'm feeling really productive i'm back on top of my shit again i kind of left all the admin -y stuff that i need to do if i need to like get my accounts together uh luckily i don't have too much to do on that i have a few other admin bits that I need to do. I need to write like a holiday list down to make sure that I don't forget anything. Um, send a few items of clothing back that I bought for holiday that I'm not happy with. So I'm gonna send those back, um, package orders, things like that. Little admin bits that I thought would, I dis made the decision not to do them today because I was feeling quite, um, tired and overwhelmed with the amount of stuff i'd already done so i made the decision to leave those because i am going to still be home for the next two days and i thought they were things that i can get on with while i'm listening to an audiobook editing is not something i could do while listening to an audiobook because i've got to be listening to the video so i thought that admin things i could do at least i've got some stuff to do while i'm listening to audiobooks over the next couple of days which is great so really happy with what i managed to do today and it did i did end up managing to get all of that filming and editing done because i was home so early and i started so early today um i managed to get it all done before final book support group kickoff sprints this evening which is fantastic news because it meant that i could read this evening i haven't read it like loads I, ha I haven't read a fuck ton and i have just watched three episodes of love is blind um and now i am forcing myself to turn off the telly and go up to bed it's not as early as it was last night but it's still earlier than i usually go to bed um i usually go up gone midnight and then i'm usually awake in bed till like three o'clock in the morning whether that be because i'm reading or scrolling tiktok or whatever but the progress that i've made today from the poll that i did on discord um between spy family volume four and business proposal volume two spy family did win i decided to kick off with this one because i wanted a small win with my reading on the basis i haven't read in nearly a week well in in a week um the last time i read something was like sunday last week maybe monday evening at a push last week so on the basis i've not read something in like seven or eight days i wanted a small win so i did read spy family volume four this is obviously continuing this story in which we're following twilight um who also goes by lloyd um and he is a spy and he has this mission in which he needs to infiltrate this family and in order to get to his family he's going through his kid who goes to this pre prestigious school so lloyd ends up adopting this young girl called anya to get her into the school so that he can get close to the family that way um in adopting this young girl he has ended up approaching this woman called yor who has he has also married now she knows that the marriage is fictitious she doesn't know that lloyd uh, lloyd and anya aren't actually father and daughter she doesn't know that anya's adopted so she thinks that lloyd uh, anya is actually lloyd's daughter anyway turns out lloyd is a spy and only lloyd knows Yor is actually an assassin and only Yor knows but as it turns out Anya can read minds and she knows what each of them are but she also knows they don't know what each of them are and these two Yor and Twilight don't know anything about Anya being telepathic so it's really interesting and in this one they end up getting this dog and there's a twist with the dog and it's just adorable and i'm really enjoying this so far this i'm obsessed with this dog he's so cute um i really enjoyed this one it's very good very much more action-packed i think than a couple of the other volumes prior have been but this did get four stars four and a half on core pile but four on goodreads and then i did finish the last i don't even know where i was up to with this um maybe like was i there 
I feel like that makes sense to me. I think I was like 451 pages in. So I read like 780 odd pages or something of fake. And I have now finished this one. This is the third one in the Madison Kate series. A quick rundown of what this series is about. We're following Madison Kate and in the first book, um, she is being targeted. It's got something to do with her dad and she's being targeted. She goes out with her best friend on Halloween and she goes to this illegal MMA fight and a woman ends up being shot at the event that looks exactly like Madison Kate. Now, the first time I ever did the description of this, I said that she had a pink wig on. I think it turns out that Madison's hair is actually pink. It's dyed pink. And I think this woman um, did have a pink wig on, but Madison actually had a different wig on because it was Halloween and she was dressed up. So this woman was mistaken for Madison Kate. It was then thought that Madison Kate was killed and she ends up being hunted down at this event after the event of the girl being killed um, and being saved by these three guys. Now, uh, she ends up being set up by these three guys. She goes to prison for like three months, I think, and then she gets banished by her father to Columbia to stay with her aunt for like eight months. And when her aunt dies, she ends up coming back to town. And when she gets to her new home, because her previous home was burned down, um, <laughs> with the events of the same night um she gets to her new home her dad is currently away on a cruise with his new girlfriend and the three guys that saved her now live in her house this is a why choose romance and it's so good and so addictive and tate james is the queen of cliffhangers i'm not joking she's the queen of cliffhangers i'm really enjoying the series so albeit I did put this down for seven days. It was a me problem, not the book. And I am 100% fully aware of that. So I've not allowed it to affect the rating in any way, shape or form. And this is the third book in the series to get five stars. I really enjoyed this. It was very, very good. Um, so that I don't really count that as continuation station or part of final book support group because I literally had like 80 pages left, if that. Um, so then I have... Now I moved on to Hopeless by Elsie Silver. I didn't get too far and I got 75 pages, but then I started to get really tired. Um, so I made the decision to uh, do one last sprint, finish the chapter I was in and then move on to Love is Blind. So then we wrapped up sprints and I've just continued watches, lo watching Love is Blind for another couple of episodes. Uh, so this one is following, this is the last book in the Chestnut Spring series. And this one is following Bo Eaton, who is the final brother within the family and it's also following oh shit what is her name bailey yeah bailey now i haven't fully figured out what's going on here but from the back of the book the synopsis um bailey comes from a kind of rival family if you like of the eatons in town their lands butt up next to each other and the eatons have been very clear about putting up like a fencing line to make sure that the other family don't come across they are very much so like druggies into crime and all of that stuff bailey has tried to take herself away from that situation she doesn't want to be associated with her family because she's not like that she works in a local bar in town unfortunately though her the the reputa reputation precedes the name the name precedes the reputation i don't know which round that go which way around that goes but because of her last name they she's got a reputation for herself that she has not earned um so she's deemed you know a slut she's deemed easy she's deemed very much similar to her siblings and her parents and it's just she hates it absolutely hates it and she's trying to save up money so she can move out of town and get away from the family name Bo is a soldier and some stuff happened in previous books in which he had an injury um and he's come back to town now and he's promised his family that he will work on the farm however he's really struggling with depression and ptsd um and he's really really struggling with that he's in kind of like this black hole and he's just not himself at all he keeps bailing on his family and he's not speaking to anybody properly and he ends up going to this bar one afternoon and spending the afternoon in this bar and he's talking back and forth with bailey there's an age gap in this um book i can't remember how old he is i think he's 35 yeah he's 35 and she's 22 and she's a virgin 
um, but they end up coming up with this agreement. He's not felt this kind of connection with a person in a long time. He feels like he can talk to her and be a bit more open with her and she doesn't pry and things like that. And he's feeling a little bit more alive. He's got a bit more of a spark about him when he's around her. So they've ended up coming up with this agreement, Bo's idea, that he, they've got this kind of deal going that her name is not everything about her. So basically this engagement was supposed to be for show this agreement. It has an end date. He once told me he'd never fallen in love and yet here I am head over heels for my fake fiance. So he reckons that um, he can break basically for him the benefit for him is that his family will stop prying because they think he's okay he's now in a relationship and he's got this fiance and for her it's a chance to get away from her family name um so i think it's going to cause some problems between the eatons and her family uh but i'm interested to see where this is going to go i do love me a good fake dating relationship so i'm intrigued so far i'm having a good time with it not a huge fan of the female narrator for the audiobook for this but it's going to help me get through it a bit quicker because i can get some stuff done tomorrow while listening to this so i only have about three hours and 45 minutes of the audio left so it won't take me too long tomorrow get to get through this so i'm hoping i might get through this in the morning and i can move on to something else um but yeah enjoying it so far i am sad to see this series finish I believe there is a short story, uh, like a novella as well in this series, but I can't remember if I've read it. Because I get myself confused all the time between this one and the Devney Perry, the Eden series. Um, so I have read a novella in that series, which is Christmas in Quincy. And I think in my head I've confused myself and said, oh yeah, I've read this one, the novella in this series. I'm going to have to look it up and see where I can find it, but... Um, yeah, I'm sad to see this series end. I do want to have Harvey's story, who is the Eton father of the people. Um, and I believe that we do get the sister, the Eton sister relationship in the Off to the Races series, which is the Gold Rush Ranch series, which I do also have and has just gone on my spring TBR. So I am intrigued to get that as well. Uh, which should be fascinating. So yeah, I am going to continue on with this tomorrow. That is my aim. I don't know what I'll move on to after this. But progress is being made and I'm happy with the progress I'm making so far. I've had a couple of wins today. I've finished a couple of books, which is nice because I haven't done that in over a week. So yeah, but I'm really freaking tired. I just wanted to come on and update you. I was about to say real quick, this has been 30 minutes so far. Just wanted to come on and update you. Um, I am going to get myself off to bed and I will probably come on and update you tomorrow once I finish Hopeless and let you know what I'm moving on to next rather than updating you in the morning. So yeah, I'm going to go to bed because I'm shattered and I will check back in with you in the morning. It is 3.25 on Tuesday afternoon and I have finished Hopeless by Elsie Silver. Um... I don't know what's going on with me and honestly it's freaking me out a little bit I'm not gonna lie like I am truly internally and ever so slightly externally really freaking out I think that I have been battling a slump for a month maybe a month and a half or something and I've just been fighting through it picking up books that I know I'm going to enjoy um every single time i feel it creeping in i'll pick up a manga or i'll pick up a book that i know i'm gonna like from a series that i'm already established in and it's been working for me however i keep convincing myself i'm then out of it and then i cre feel it creeping back in again and then i get out of it feel it creeping back in again i think not picking a book up last week for the whole week has allowed it to fully creep in and I feel out of control, completely out of control. I haven't had, I'm not sure if I've ever had a slump like this. I've had slumps where it's in a certain genre, like I'm currently in a high epic fantasy slump and I think this has stemmed from DNF in, um, what the fuck did I DNF? Words of Radiance? Is that oh no the way of kings i think it stemmed from dnf in the way of kings and putting me back in that high epic fantasy slump but since then i've been struggling 
um, and I am a little bit terrified. All I want to do is sit and watch TV or work and uh, it's it's worrying me a little bit. It is worrying me. Now I know that a lot of people are going to say, look, if you're in a slump, you're in a slump. Just let it ride itself out. And I understand that. That makes sense. However, my entire job relies on me to be able to read books so that I can review them. This is my full-time job. <laughs> YouTube, Patreon and the shop are my full-time jobs. I can, I, if I don't read, I have nothing to do videos on. So it freaks me out a little that I could, that I'm now finding myself in a situation where I don't want to read or I'm struggling to read. And now I'm panicking a little bit and I'm freaking out a little bit because what 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 do I do now? <laughs> uh, so I found myself in a little bit of a situation here. I have finished Hopeless. Usually this series is one of my guaranteed this will help me stop being in a slump series. Guaranteed. The Chestnut Spring series has saved me more time than I care to remember. However, I don't know if it's me or the book, but I know a couple of people that have said to me, since I mentioned I was putting this on my TBI yesterday, that they didn't like this one as much as they'd like the rest. And I'm freaking out a little bit, because I'm like, is it the book that's the problem, or is it me that's the problem? Because I couldn't wait for this to end. I couldn't wait for it to end. I love fake dating. This is a fake marriage. Um... A fake engagement so it's fake dating between Bo and also I, I can't even remember her name Bailey and I liked the premise I just don't know if I liked the execution I don't know if I enjoyed the characters as much we ha we haven't had a whole deal of Bailey through these books um, with him being a soldier, he has obviously been like out um, at war and stuff. And then a thing happens to him during Jasper's book and now he is back in town. And I just don't know if I connected with him. I didn't really care, which is really bad considering the subject matter with Bo. He has PTSD, he's got a lot on his mind. But I just don't think I cared. I didn't care about him and Bailey. I didn't, wasn't too fussed about Bailey as a whole. Oh, I just didn't really care. I liked it more when the rest of the family was involved. So the text back and forth between Bailey or and one of the other women from the previous books or between um, Bo and his brothers or Bo and his dad Harvey like I preferred those scenes I preferred the scenes where the family was involved but I when it was just them two I just didn't care and I'm really sad about it and I'm concerned because I don't know if that's the book on me I am not sure uh, so I haven't run this through Corpal yet I'm going to but I can't see it it's not going to get a five star that's for damn sure I don't even know if it's going to get a four. This could be a three star read for me. I'm just, it's been my least favourite in the whole series. And that concerns me. Because I don't want to do that to the rest of the books I'm going to pick up this week. So now I find myself in a little bit of a sticky situation. Because do I allow myself to not read for the rest of the day and allow the slump to take over for the day? Do I continue pushing myself and trying to pick up the books that I have on my TBR? Do I need to switch up my genre? Because I've been reading a fuck ton of romance this, like, recently, the last few months. Maybe I just need to switch the genre up a little bit and uh, pick something else up. I'm not sure what's going on with me. So I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to test the genre theory and see if picking something else up is going to help. So just veto romance right now. But... Um, I do have a couple of books here, a couple, I have a handful of books here, that I think what I might do is try like a chapter of them or something, see if anything sticks and just see where to go from there. If nothing's sticking, I may try some manga, I may just give up on reading altogether today specifically and maybe go into it with a clearer head tomorrow. I wonder if I pushed myself too hard with work yesterday 
and I have ended up feeling just drained today. I am very, very tired. I just ended up feeling drained. I, I'm just not sure what's going on and I'm worried because last week was hard and I was struggling mentally. Um, but the previous week I was really struggling with my mental health as well and I'm just concerned that um, my depression could be creeping back in and I'm not sure what's causing it because my life is... I'm, it's, it's going well at the moment, you know, like I'm happy with my partner, I, my my family are doing okay. I, I just don't know what's going on and I'm concerned, I'm worried. <laughs> and because of, because of the, I, it could be as simple as a slump, you know, and that is a very simple thing. It could be as simple as a slump and that could be it. Um, but because of who I am as a person, I end up catastrophizing and now I'm like, oh, maybe I'm hitting rock bottom again. Maybe my depression's creeping in again. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that. And now I'm just making it a bigger thing than maybe it actually is. And I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. So, uh, I don't know. I have do have this stack of books here that I might try. Um, we've got A Curious Beginning, which is the first in the Veronica Speedwell series by Deanna Rayborn. So it is starting a series, but I can't be picky right now. You know, I just, I've been staring. I have been watching an episode of Love is Blind downstairs for the last hour. But prior to that, for about 45 minutes, I had to take myself out of this room. Because for about 45 minutes, I stared at this show, these shelves to be like, I will literally, it doesn't matter if it's a series. It doesn't matter if it's the start of a series. It doesn't matter if it's standalone. Whatever it is, if something jumps out at me, I will read that. <laughs> not a single thing i have over 1300 books in this room i have over 600 i think it is unread not a single book was calling my name not one not one and i'm it's it's terrifying it is terrifying i fucking hate a slump honestly this is probably the I, if it is a slump this is probably the worst slump i've ever had honestly it's quite frightening so we've got a curious beginning by diana rayborn um i do have mina on the undead by amy mccall which i have been wanting to read uh recently so i'm gonna stick this on here maybe give that a chapter give it a try i have uh blood marked by tracy dion which is the second in the legend born series um this is a chonker but it's continuing a series so maybe that could work i don't know I have Light Lark by Alex Astor because I've been craving wanting to pick this up recently as well. Not so much right now. <laughs> but I have been craving wanting to pick this up. I know this is, um, I think it's YA fantasy romance, but it's got the fantastical element to it and the, the you know, the trials and stuff. So maybe that will do it for me. I don't know. And then I do have two novellas. So I've got Exit Strategy by Martha Wells, which is sci-fi and it is the fourth book in the murderbot diaries and then i also have what feast the night by t kingfisher which is the second in the um swan soldiers series uh so i really enjoyed the first one so this one could be another one to potentially pick up so these two are swapping very much so genres sci-fi horror uh this one is still romantic element to it but it's fantasy romance and it is ya this one is fantasy i don't know if there's like a subgenre to it as well uh this one is horror ya horror and this one is mystery so i'm mixing the genres up a little bit it's nothing too drastic okay it kind of is i've got some horror and sci-fi on here i haven't read a sci-fi in so long so yeah i thought by putting on some shorter novellas like some shorter books maybe that might help me out a little bit give me a sense of achievement get me through something pretty quickly um, and then I just thought I would put on some that I have been thinking about recently but haven't been reaching for. Either I've not had the time to do so or whatever. So, I don't know. We're going to give that a go. I still have two books I've got to get through for a booktuber favourites video that's going to go up in April while I'm away on holiday. I do not have time to be in a reading slump. <laughs> and i am stressed <laughs> i am so ready for this holiday so ready i really desperately need a break two weeks away from 
my work from maybe this room i don't know like all of last week i didn't step foot in here once last week not once did i come in this room last week um my plant has pretty much died because i just neglected it for the whole week because <laughs> i didn't come in here so yeah i don't know this slump is truly creeping in and i am concerned so i've got sprints starting in like half an hour i may just end up watching love is blind while everybody else reads we will see what happens but i'm gonna go potentially give these a bash but i'll keep you posted this is not the update i wanted to do but it is what it is unfortunately uh so yeah i'm gonna go and i'll give you an update when i've got something to update you on maybe i will miraculously sort myself out and everything will be okay and it's just that hopeless wasn't a good book <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure we'll find out though. So I'm going to go and I'll speak to you in a little bit. afternoon it is wednesday and it's currently 24 minutes past 12 i am on sprints at the moment uh, and i'm going to do these for a couple of hours before i go to andy's later we're going to ignore the mismatch of clothes okay <laughs> it's a little bit warm but a little bit chilly at the same time and i've got a t-shirt on and then put a sweater over the top not a sweater hoodie uh so yesterday i was having a struggle massive struggle i went into panic stations about the fact that i thought i was going into a slump i'm still not sure 100 percent what is going on with that but i tried a couple of books before i finally settled on something i tried the first chapter of light lark and i am intrigued by it but i didn't think i was in the mood for fantasy um and then i tried mina and the undead by amy mccaw and i don't know if it's that i'm in a slump or whether i needed a change of genre or a change of format or something there is no audiobook for this but i do have it on both my kindle and the physical copy and i have been reading the physical copy so far i am going to switch over to the kindle in a second because i read quicker on kindle uh, but i'm currently 41 pages into this i got like around 34 pages last night and i've just read a few more pages to finish the chapter off before i then moved on to watching love is blind for many many hours um it is what it is uh so i have decided to move on to mina this one is following mina who visits new orleans where her older sister libby is staying um libby is 19 i'm assuming mina is 17 she's coming up 18 she's two years younger than libby and libby has been living in new orleans for a while now now mina and libby's sister left the year before and they're not 100 percent certain on the reason why she left but she did leave and not long after libby moved to america to go to university and libby was kind of like left on her own with her aunt now her aunt has since died and she's now gone to visit mina for sorry libby for for the summer in new orleans libby works in a mansion that they kind of use as a uh kind of um haunted house if you like they set dress it all up they tell you stories and they have the likes of you know freddy krueger and um michael myers different types of villains from horror movies uh going round and you know scaring people things like that uh so this is set in 1995 by the way and there is a festival going on in the background as well in new orleans called new orleans fang fest and she's going to be there for the summer and i think we're going to get you know some you know slasher vibes from this this is what i'm hoping for anyway i'm constantly looking for books that give me the vibe of clan in a cornfield um it's too far up for me to get it by adam caesar caesar i don't know how you pronounce it now i 
you know, you, you're not supposed to die tonight gave me a little bit of that, but it was too short for me. Um, and I'm constantly looking for books that are going to give me that vibe because I love it. I'm obsessed with it. So I feel like this could give me the vibe. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Amy did send me the second book in this series and i think the third one is about to be released or has just been released she sent me mina and the slayers so i'm very excited to get on with this series this one is much chunkier than this one and i know it's starting a series and we're in the final book support group but right now i just have to go with my mood otherwise i'm not going to pick anything up i'm enjoying this so far we have met a couple of friends of libby's that live with her in her apartment so we've got jared who also works at the mansion and then we've got lucas who does like the artist side of things at the mansion lucas has a little bit of a strange side to him but jared also has a bit of a mysterious side to him i think mina has immediately got a little bit of an infatuation with with uh jared Libby has a girlfriend called Dila and I'm interested to see where this is go where this is going to go. I'm already really enjoying myself. I'm really enjoying the uh lore that we're getting from the different stories that are being shared of vampires in New Orleans and I'm really enjoying myself so far. So, I'm excited to continue on with this. I'm excited that I'm finally getting round to this because I've had this for a while on my shelves. So, I am getting to a TBR vet, which I think I can use this for that prompt. Um even though it is the start of a series. It is what it is. <laughs> I'm not sorry about it. Uh so I think TBR vet is on the prompt board. I'm fairly certain it is. So this is what I'm reading and I'm enjoying it so far. I'm having a good time. So I'm going to continue on with this. I just wanted to give you an update. I have calmed down from yesterday. I went on my walking pad for like 15 minutes and kind of calmed myself down a little bit and then got started on this. Um, got to like page 35, wherever I was up to, page 34, and then watched Love is Blind till four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> It is what it is. Uh, so I finished with season two of Love is Blind and I've started the first, well, I've finished the first episode. Second episode? Oh no, I must be a ways in because they're on holiday at the moment. Maybe I'm like two or three episodes into season three. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, so... I'm enjoying this so far. We're on to a winner, I think, which is great news. So I'm going to continue on with this one. What? Thomas? Pop it in there. Give it up. Swish around, get all the paint off. Ready? I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do it again. A different colour, what colour do you want? Uh, pink. Some more on. Good morning, team. It is Saturday. It's been a couple of days since I've updated you because, um, honestly, I haven't had much to update you on. It's been a busy couple of days. I've been at work. Um, so, Andy's sorting his screen protector out in the background. I am Andy's. We're about to go to Bury to do some shopping. We need to get some holiday clothes and some little bits and stuff for holiday. So, um... I have done a little bit of reading. I've been continuing on with Mina and the Undead. I haven't done a lot. My hair is literally everywhere. I haven't done a lot, but I am now on page 154. And I think my aim, once we get back from shopping, I am going to go home and I'm going to host some sprints tonight and then probably host some sprints for most of the day tomorrow. Um, so I think my aim will be to try and finish Mina tonight and then pick something else up for tomorrow. Fingers crossed that that will work out that way and I won't get distracted by the TV. <laughs> Uh, so 
that is the plan so yeah still really enjoying this having a great time amy the author of this book has actually been in contact with me and she has said that she will send me a copy of the latest one that's coming out two weeks i think just shy of two weeks um so she's gonna send me the latest one which is so sweet of her bless her um so yeah that is the plan so i am gonna go because we need to go and pick up andy's mum and stepdad and we're gonna go to bury for the after well for the it's 10 o'clock for the day <laughs> so yeah i haven't been to bury in ages so it'll be, it'll be nice to go uh so that is the plan all right so i'll speak to you in a bit probably when i get home and i've made some more progress on mina and I'll speak to you then. Okay, hello. It's currently just gone 5 p.m. and I just got home. It's still Saturday. Uh, whether or not I do any sprints today, I'm not 100% certain. I'm absolutely shattered. We spent hours in Bury and it was a really good day out despite the weather. But <laughs> I have no idea what this is. So, and there is a freaking giant one at the bottom. I'm going to open this one first. I'm pretty desperate to get into these because this is damp and I'm not sure what it is. So, um i thought we could do it on here oh i do know what this is i hate that it's damp though that is so annoying it is i do know what this one is it's from simon and schuster and it comes out on the 11th of april and it is sleepwalkers by scarlett thomas i if i remember correctly i think this is a thriller the scintillizing new novel from the author of the end of mr y um a gothic thriller, exhilarating, suspenseful and subversively funny. The sleepwalkers ask urgent questions about relationships, sexuality and the darkest elements of contemporary society where our most terrible secrets are hidden in plain sight. Fascinating. I did get an email being asked about this one and I am intrigued by it. It sounds really good. It doesn't look like something I would walk into a shop and pick up or hunt down. But it sounds good and I thought it would be a nice physical read to potentially take on holiday with me as it comes out while I'm away on holiday. So I thought I could take it with me, get a cheeky holiday pick with it and then uh, maybe post a review or a mid review if I'm part way through it. So thank you to Simon and Schuster for sending me that one. I'm glad it's not too damp. That's great news. Then we have a Waterstones parcel. So this is clearly something I have pre-ordered. Whatever that may be. Oh sick i think this has come a couple days early it is play of shadows by sebastian de castell i have the audiobook for this one i haven't read crucible of chaos yet but i do have the audiobook for this one and i'm very excited fancy uh sword play intrigue and friendship stronger than iron will sweep you up in a journey of swashbuckling fantasy in this first volume of the new gray coat series by best-selling author sebastian de castell i love the gray coat series so i'm so freaking excited to read this one and i cannot wait so i'm very hyped to get that one then we have something from pan mcmillan which is exciting sent with love from from book break so I'm not sure what is in here. I can't remember if I requested something. I actually thought Sleepwalkers was from, um, <gasps> I don't think I requested, what? Did I? I can't remember if I did or not. Oh, either way, this is very exciting. If I remember, if I requested it, I freaking forgot. It's Business Casual by P.K. Morrison. This is so exciting. Listen, I've only read one book by B.K. Morrison and it's Love Light Farms, but I absolutely loved it that I just know I'm going to love the rest of the books. And this is the, if I remember the final book, yeah, Business Casual is the hotly anticipated final book in the wholesome rom-com Love Light series. Are you ready for one final trip to Inglewood? I am not quite, but I will be. Um, <laughs> I can't remember the release date for this. I think it's June or July. It does say coming summer 2024. Let me see if I can find out real quick. July si July 18th, this comes out in the UK. I, I'm obsessed with this cover. This is stunning. I love it. Oh, I'm so excited. This is much bigger than the others. Um, but I'm excited. Oh, it looks bigger. It's just sh shy of 400 pages. For some reason, it looks bigger. Just saw the word ADHD on page. Please tell me there's a character with ADHD in here because I am... I was diagnosed with ADHD as a kid. <gasps> Fascinating. Thank you so much to Book Break for that. Oh, that's so exciting. Right, we've got something from Amazon. 
I am so intrigued by this massive parcel. I don't know what it is. This is wrapped. Who did this? It was C. Oh, this is a pre-order from CC. Hang on. Oh, hang on. I thought for a minute it might be Player Shadows because I can't remember whether or not that was on my wish list. She said to me when she ordered my birthday presents that she'd order me a pre-order. Steph, have the most amazing birthday and remember you are loved and amazing. See you very soon. I'm interested in your views from this one from CC. <gasps> Oh my god, it's Wolf Gone Wild by Juliet Cross. I've been wanting to read this for so long. Um, and then I think it was picked up by a publisher. So Union Square and Co. I am fairly certain it used to be indie published, and then I think it's been picked up by a publisher, which is why it went on pre-order. This is so heavy. Um, so this is very exciting. I think it's a fantasy romance, and I am hyped about this one. Cece, thank you so much, you sweet, sweet angel. I adore you. Thank you. Check out Amazon not fucking up a pre-order. Love that for them. Because <laughs> I don't pre-order from Amazon for that reason. Because they fuck it up every time. Right. What is in here? It's from HarperCollins. What have they sent me? This is... <laughs> this is such a large bag. Oh my god. It's a... Giant freaking box. What is this for? Ow. Oh, I knew I was hitting this as well and I forgot. Okay, so this is for Emily the Strange. How cool is this poster? Emily the Strange, which is, I think, a graphic novel set. And they asked it, they asked me whether or not I wanted a, oh, this is so pretty, whether or not I wanted a set from them um, for the books. So there is this, is this a sticker or a bookmark? She's always strange, Emily doesn't change. Very cute. And then, oh, 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 they're bound together. So we've got some uh, Twizzlers, Cherry Twizzlers. And we have this gorgeous stack of books. I'm not gonna take these out of here on here because I wanna do an unboxing for them and then take a picture of them like this or take a picture of them like this and then do an unboxing for them. But there is like a cute pin, it's got a bow. That is absolutely adorable. So we've got Emily the Strange of the Lost Days. We've got Emily the Strange, Stranger and Stranger. We've got Emily the Strange, Dark Times and Peace of Mind. This is such a beautiful set. If I remember correctly, I think these are graphic novels. Or are they books? I'm not sure, but this is such a beautiful set. Thank you so much to Half Collins for sending me this because this is stunning. I'm so excited. <laughs> Outstanding. And um, this set has already returned. Uh, 14th of March it returned. Do it yourself think for yourself be yourself emily's not your average 13 year old she wears the same black dress every day she loves maths and science her best friends are four black cats and she's into old rock and punk music emily is anything but typical and so is this exciting series of novels about her life okay so they're not graphic novels i don't know why i thought they were graphic novels but i did um so that is very exciting thank you so much i have gone into that oh my goodness me i am so hyped I don't know how I got to a position where I was coming home and receiving multiple books uh, from publishers. That is so exciting. I know it's my freaking job, but I honestly don't get that many books from publishers unless they're, you know, unsolicited. Um, but it's it's exciting to come home and have books from publishers. Thank you again to Cece for Wolf Gone Wild. Thank you again to Book Break and Pam McMillan for... Um, business casual and also thank you to Simon and Schuster for the sleepwalkers and thank you to me for play of shadows and Harper Collins for the Emily Strange series I am so excited and you know what I only bought one of these books that's so exciting I'm so proud of myself I actually walked past the waterstones today in Bury so I'm really proud of myself I didn't go in and he was like no and I was like a part of me wanted to go in just because he was like no he was joking he was like I'm only joking babe if you want to go in go in I was like no I can't be trusted so I didn't um but yeah how exciting I am hyped um so 
I also have a giant bag of clothes that have been delivered as well, holiday clothes. So I now need to go through everything that I've ended up buying today and then the holiday clothes as well. I need to try everything on so that I know what needs to go back and then what else I still need. Um, so I think that's going to be my plan. I did buy some fish cakes off the market today as well. So I'm going to make some fish cakes and some food. I am a dumb bitch. <laughs> I got fish cakes and my intention was to stop at Tesco Extra on the way home to pick up some chips and either veggies or mushy peas. So I picked up the veggies. I then got distracted by picking something up for tomorrow's tea. I got some stuff for my breakfast. I got some mushy peas. So I've got both veggies and mushy peas. I got some monster and I've not picked any chips up. <laughs> and I've just this second realized as I was about to tell you what I'm having for my tea. You dumb fuck. I can't be bothered going back out. So I might have the fish cakes tomorrow instead and have what I picked up for tomorrow's tea tonight and just nip out in the morning and pick up some chips. What a stupid idiot. It's because I'm knackered. We got, we, we, I pick, we picked Andy's mum and stepdad up at 10 o'clock this morning to go to Bury. So we got into Bury about half 10 and we have been walking round till uh, I think we got back to the car maybe quarter past three, half three. Um, it's been a long ass day. We've managed to pick up a lot of things for the holiday, which is good. But I'm absolutely knackered. I don't usually get that much pressure. I should, but I don't. So I'm shattered. And I think I'm just going to chill this evening. I may do a bit of reading, but I'm going to schedule some sprints tomorrow and try and do all day sprints tomorrow because um, I've been slacking this week a little bit. I did do sprints Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, but yeah, I haven't done any Thursday, Friday and I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to do some this evening. I'm so tired. So yeah, I just wanted to unbox all of that with you. Thank you again to any, all of the publishers that have uh, sent me something to CC and to myself for Play of Shadows. <laughs> I'm very excited about that book. I'm not going to get to it anytime soon, but I'm excited. So yeah, I'm going to go sort out all those clothes, put these somewhere, uh, maybe try and do the a reel for the Emily Strange box before it goes dark um, and sort myself out. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, good morning. It is Sunday. It is four minutes to 12. Sprints will be starting at 12. So I only have a few minutes. I was just filming a clip for the booktuber favorites video in my bay window and my neighbor appeared in her bay window and she was waving at me. So I interrupted my clip to wave back. Um, <laughs> feel a little bit hot and bothered now <laughs> I've never been caught filming before that was really funny uh okay so update on my reading I we have today left that is it and I've got two books I need to finish that I'm part way through the first one is Mina and the Undead and I have about 140 pages of this left to read this is a physical read and I I have it on my kindle but it's dead <laughs> so I forgot to put it on charge this morning so I need to finish this one off today um I cannot have this running into next week and then the other book that I am currently reading I'll tell you about it now but I'm not telling you what my thoughts are on it because it's for a different video um it's for the booktuber favorites video spoiler alert uh but I am also reading things we left behind which is a final book so it does count for this week um but Obviously, I'm not giving you my full thoughts on it. I am currently 181 pages in. So I have 400 pages of this left to read as well. Um, so whether or not I actually manage both of those tasks today, I'm not sure. <laughs> we will have to see. I think in theory what I need to do is prioritise Mina. I can't have this running into next week by any means because I've got plans for next week. This could run into it. I could read this in the background um, and get it finished if i have just a like a little bit left by the end of the day we'll see what happens so i may be switching in and out of these or i may prioritize mina on sprints and then i can listen to this later on or if i've got things to do during the day i can potter about i do need to sort out the washing 
it's currently finished in the washing machine i need to put it in the dryer and put a second load in so we'll see what happens but this is my aim today um it hasn't been a great round of final book support group for me i did finish fake and also read spy x family volume four um and hopeless so i have read some stuff but it's it's not been my tbr and i'm sad that i haven't finished the uh, savage land series like i have been up to date with that series the whole time we've been going through it with the alpha ho book club becca's patron book club so i'm really sad i haven't finished it <laughs> really really sad um and also kate as well for the madison kate series i'm sad that i haven't got to that one the world we make which was you know a tbr vet for me so it is what it is unfortunately the last couple of weeks march as a whole has been very chaotic and it's been very exhausting and i think i've just been very uh maybe overstimulated a lot of this week a lot of this month very burnt out this month for sure especially last week and then going into this week as well so i'm just trying to be kinder to myself i've picked up something that i'm actually really enjoying and i'm so glad i've picked up and then obviously this as well i'm i am having a great time but that's all i'm going to tell you about that so i'm going to go because these sprints are starting in 25 seconds and i'll check back in with you later Monday morning and I'm here to wrap this vlog up I have edited edited it up until this point but I'm here to wrap it up and let you know exactly what I got through this week um it didn't go to plan like I hoped I had a little bit of a meltdown in the middle of the week I am okay don't panic I am all right I just I think I became very overwhelmed I was underwhelmed with a book that I had high expectations for and it threw me into a spiral so it's been a busy this month in general has been quite busy i've been feeling very burnt out with life and work and reading and just everything and i think i just desperately need a break <laughs> um so yeah I, otherwise it's been a good week in general i have done quite a lot i got to you saw me spending some time with matt and thomas painting some easter eggs and then we took thomas and uh luca to a sensory class on friday morning which was really nice and then saturday i spent the day with andy and his mom and stepdad we went to bury and it was lovely so it's been a pretty busy week considering i've had a readathon going on but it is what it is so we started the week off by reading spy family volume four to continue on with the series and i did give this one four stars i had a really good time with it very excited to continue that series i did wrap up fake by tate james i had about 80 pages left and i gave this one a five star um gutted that i didn't get to kate this week and it's probably going to be a while before i actually manage to pick that one up now so it is a shame but it is what it is there's nothing i can do about it then i read hopeless by elsie silver which put me in a spiral <laughs> because i only give it three stars and i'm absolutely devastated i just didn't have a good time with this one and i'm not sure if it was me or the book i just wasn't enjoying my time with it. i couldn't wait for it to be over didn't enjoy the characters i'm just really sad about the whole thing honestly i'm i'm mad about it then last night i did finish yesterday even mina and the undead by amy mccaw i loved this this was so freaking good the atmosphere in here is absolutely fantastic and i just had a grand old time with this um i love the pop pop culture references i love the characters i love the twists and turns and the atmosphere of new orleans and the whole vampire scene and he just loved it i had such a fantastic time and this definitely gave me like the slasher vibes that i'm looking for that i got from clown in a cornfield this 
gave it me amy mccourt knocked this out of the park i gave it five stars and i'm so excited to continue on with the series and feel very very lucky that she sent me mina and the slayers and she's going to send me a copy of the third one as well so mina and the cult and i'm so stoked so thank you amy for i did buy this one from forbidden planet but thank you to amy for giving me the push that i needed to pick this one up because it's been on my shelves for a while um but thank you for sending me book two and also book three when it arrives as well i do appreciate you and then last but by no means least i did finish another book that i have already told you i won't be giving you my full thoughts and i won't even give you my rating on this one but i did want you to just acknowledge that last night i did prioritize this after i came off sprints i was on an iron i wanted to watch scream because of this <laughs> There's no vampires in Scream, but the slasher, I just wanted, I wanted to watch Scream when I finished that. I'd made some more progress in this book and I only had like two hours and 45 minutes left of the audiobook. But I prioritised this over watching Scream last night and I'm very grateful to myself for doing that. But it is Things We Left Behind by Lucy Score, so I also finished this one the like last week i finished it last night so and it is a final book so it does count for final book support group so overall i did finish quite a bit it looks more impressive i only read 80 pages of fake but i finished quite a bit i'm just really sad i didn't manage to finish the madison kate series or the savage land series it is what it is um sometimes you just need to go off piste from your tbr and mood read and that's exactly what i did and i made such a good decision with mina and the undead because it was exactly what i needed and um yeah i had a relatively good time despite the meltdown it was a pretty good week and i'm glad it was a somewhat success <laughs> I mean I got two series finished I did start another one and continued two more but progress is progress you know um so what can I say <laughs> I hope your week was more successful than my week and if it wasn't don't panic we will be back in May with another readathon announcement video will be coming up in April so keep your eyes peeled for that um but yeah chat to me in the comments down below did you take book did you take book did you take part in final book support group this past week what did you read did you have a good time um yeah chat to me in the comments down below i hope you have enjoyed and i shall see you in whatever comes next bye for now